What's up everybody, Sam Smyers here. Today I wanna to talk about the new features of the FabFilter Pro C3. Now before we get started today, please make sure that you are subscribed to my channel and please go ahead and give this video a like. Now first I want to take a look at the Pro C3 and the Pro C2 side by side so we can visually see what the differences look like. You can see that the knobs are different, just visually it looks a lot darker on the Pro C3, the colors are a bit different. If I go up to the top, you can see that this whole preset menu is different. There's a bunch of new presets that you can use compared to the presets that are available in the Pro C2. And let's open up the sidechain section on both of these. And this is where you can see some of the new features in the Pro C3. So now let's just shift into focusing on the Pro C3 and go into this sidechain menu. So let's move this over and you can adjust the sizing. Let's make this a bit bigger. So let's make this the medium size so we can see everything. We could go a bit larger. I think there is a large, and then there's also a full screen size so we can make this massive. Let's just go back to medium though. Now within this sidechain menu, you have internal, external, host, sync, and MIDI. The new options are the host, sync, and MIDI. And if you have used this Kickstart plugin by Nicky Romero that was made by Cable Guys, it's very similar in the options that you have. You can sync it to the host by selecting sync. You can sync, you can have the sidechain be triggered by MIDI or audio. And also visually, it looks similar. The Pro C3 it looks similar to that Kickstart too. So let's turn on this host sync and I will put it on top of a Reese bass. And here are the note options. Let's just leave it on a quarter note. Let's play around with this offset. It seems like that plays around with the timing. Let's play around with this length. It's at 10% by default. Let's just put that back to 10%. And then the MIDI, if I select MIDI, then you can use a MIDI note as a trigger. So let's say I have this MIDI track here. I have the external instruments set up on the MIDI track. MIDI sent to this Reese bass, and then I send it to the Pro C3. And so now these MIDI notes up here at the top are going to be triggering this Pro C3, and I can change the MIDI notes as well. Let's make some adjustments to the rhythm here so we can hear how that sounds. And I will loop that. And that's just these MIDI notes being turned on and off. There is no actual instrument. It's just the MIDI notes that are triggering this Pro C3. So those are the new sidechain options. Let's just put it back onto internal. Also this EQ is different. So you can add in six bands and this EQ looks a lot really similar to the Pro Q4 in the way that if I add a band, you have all these options for the type of band that I can add and you can add six of them. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And then if I click to try to add more, then it won't add anymore. So you can add up to six different bands to your sidechain. And this is for any of the si of the external or the internal sidechain options you can add on this EQ. Let's go back to the default setting. Now, one thing that I found interesting about this default settings is that by default, it has on a low cut at 85 Hertz, and then also has this stereo link at 80%. Now, if I go to the Pro C2, and I take a look at the, the default settings, you can see that on the EQ, it doesn't have any of the EQ applied, and also the stereo link is at 100%. So I don't know why they decided to make that as a default plugin, as a default for the plugin, because there's a lot of people that won't know this is happening. And if they put this compressor on top of anything like a bass or a kick or anything with low end, then you might not want this low cut turned on. So I might have to adjust some of these settings for the default and then you can resave this as the default setting. So here it says you can customize the default setting preset as you like and save it via the preset options by going save as default. So you might want to do that. And then the stereo link. Now, this is something that 
Sometimes I like it to be unlinked if you have a stereo sound. So that means that compression is being applied to the left sound differently than the right, or the left channel differently than the right channel. So if the left channel goes up, but the right channel does not go up, then this left channel is going to be triggering the threshold on that compressor and the compressor is going to push that down to be whatever is the level that is set by the threshold. And then if you have it links, if this one goes up, like the left channel goes all the way up, then it's going to press a uh, threshold that's going to compress both the left and right channels the same evenly. And we can just take a look at how this works by looking at the gain meter here. And I do have a respace on. So this is a great sound to uh, visually see what is happening here. I can see varying degrees of gain reduction being applied to both of the channels. If I put this at 0%, You see how a lot of uh, a variation, a lot more variation in the gain reduction is happening between the two channels. If I put this at 100% now, let's do 100%. You can see the gain reduction is equal across both of the channels. And that is usually the default of most compressors. So I don't know why they, they have the default set to 80%. Let's close the sidechain menu and move on to this auto threshold. This is new to the Pro C3. The tooltips say that when this is enabled, the threshold will work level independent. So triggering on a certain signal at different level input levels will result in the same amount of compression. This can be very useful in case of dialogue processing. For example, when some parts are often louder than others. Let's experiment with this auto threshold on a drum bus. Now I think possibly the threshold moves a little bit depending on the signal because as I move this knob, it's still the gain is still being adjusted to depending on this threshold amount. Um, so it doesn't sound too different to me. So possibly when you have a vocal, a voice talking like me talking right now, maybe that is when this is more applicable because it will adjust the threshold and flow with the sound a bit more. You do have this option for adding character now, so you can add tube, diode, and bright. Let's start with tube, and we can hear how this sounds on these drums. Let's go ahead and turn up the drive. You can also choose it to be post-processed, so after the compression or before the compression. So I turned it on to pre. And this might be cool. I could add this diode on, slam this compressor, take up that ratio, and maybe I will do something where I adjust the dry with the wet. So let's take off the auto gain, take down the wet gain, Put the dry gain to zero dB. Maybe do something like that where I'm adding in this parallel compression with a bit of dirt. Another new feature of the Pro C3 is that you can apply the compression to individual channels if you have Dolby Atmos, Dolby Surround Sound. And I don't believe you can have surround sound channels in Ableton, so I can't really show you how to do that. If anyone knows how to do that in Ableton, then please let me know. I know that there is a way where you can go into your channel and add in this thing called the surround panner like that, but I don't know if there is a way to actually have a channel that is a surround sound channel because even when I put on this surround panner, it's not like I was able to actually access the options in Pro C3 for changing the compression to each of the channels. And essentially what will happen is when you put this on a surround channel, then you'll see here where you're seeing the gain reduction, you'll see all of the different channels pop up 
where the compression is being applied and then you can open up your sidechain and then play around with the linking of all the channels, unlink them or link them all together. Another new feature of the Pro C3 is that you can now view it in the Pro Q4 instance list. So if I open up the Pro Q4 instance list, then you'll see here I have the Pro C and I can click on that and view it bigger. and make some basic adjustments within this instance list. Now, the thing about this instance list is you do have to upgrade your Pro Q4 by downloading the latest version. They didn't really say that anywhere. So if you go into help, you can check your about and your Pro Q4 will say version four and you have to go on the website and download 4.1 so that you can access this new update to the instance list. And so if you go to the website, you can see the version that says 4.1. So you can just download the newest version. And it's not a paid upgrade. You just have to make sure to download this new version uh, so that you can access the updated instance list. Otherwise, if you open up your instance list and you do have the Pro C3, which is new, then it won't show up. Now I did have the Pro C2. So when I upgraded to the Pro C3, it only cost me $69.65 for the upgrade. These new features, I don't think they're essential. So if you do like the Pro C2, then just stick with the Pro C2. I think that some of the options with the sidechain, you probably already have in some other plugins, if, especially if you have Kickstart or Shaperbox by Cable Guys. And maybe if you do want to use that instance list, I think that is a unique feature that I assume that that filter is going to be rolling out with all of their new updates. They're probably going to have everything accessible within that instance list in the Pro Q4. If you do want access to that, then the only way to access that is to upgrade to the Pro C3, but I don't think it's really essential. I haven't really used it uh, in a way where I felt like it was absolutely needed. I can always just go to the track where that plugin is on and then adjust the plugin from there. And those are all the main new features of the Pro C3. If you go to the website, you can see all of the different features that they either upgraded, improved, or added. So you can see there are some more improved things with how visually it looks uh, and better support and things like that. So you can just go through all the key features if you wanna see some other improvements that they made to the plugin. I did go over all the new features. So if you do want a more comprehensive overview of how to use the Pro C2, then I will link that video below. So do check out that video.